So I don't really do a lot of case reviews on the channel, mostly because as cases come out, they really tend to feel very much the same. In fact, as I've done a few reviews on them, I noticed that a lot of the reviews just sounded the same. It's good at holding your Switch and some extra games, and maybe occasionally they'll do something cool like have a spot for an extra battery bank to sit in, but for the most part, there's nothing too crazy in the world of cases, at least until the Nintendo Switch Lite came out, which, of course, most people who are using a Switch Lite probably are using it uh, traveling or just portably around the house even. A lot of times the Switch will be used as a docked only system as well, so there is you know, different situations for that one, but the Switch Lite does not dock, which means you're, of course, using it pretty much all over the place most times. So, naturally, to see a case from Nintendo, by the way, this appears to be a first party product done by solely them. I was looking for another company like Power A or Hori or something, can't find it on the website, can't find it on the box. This is seemingly Nintendo's product. But it's been in the news quite a bit. Uh, people were wondering when it would come over, leave Japan and go other countries as well. And it's now out, at least in the US, I've seen it. Uh, it popped up on Amazon the other day. So I went ahead and picked it up. It is $39.99. And that sounds like quite a bit for a flip cover. And I can agree to that to an extent. However, it was brought to my attention that flip covers for things like iPads are like $100 from Apple. So I guess if you look at it that way, this is, I guess, a more fair priced uh, flip cover, but I still look at it like, hmm, that's gonna be tough for some people to justify $40 for something that just flips over and covers the front of your system. But nonetheless, today we're gonna take a look at this thing and see if it's actually worth 40 bucks and give you an idea of what you would get if you decide to buy it. So of course, we'll start with an unboxing to see what you get when you buy this. It is a Nintendo Switch Lite flip cover and screen protector. So they do throw a screen protector in there as well. I doubt it's like super high quality. This to me, this part, screen protector, and they have a little image here feels like them throwing something extra in just to try to make it worth I guess a bit more if you decide to buy it I, that just feels tacked on to me I don't, I don't really think it's necessary if they think the case is worth it but either way it's an extra thing that you that you at least get with the with the case itself so popping this guy open there's not much in there although you really don't need much they have the instructions even on the back here uh, looking at it, we have our screen protector right here. We'll actually go ahead and drop that on just to see if it's any good. I, again, doubt it's as good as something like one of the dedicated glass screen protectors you can get, but either way, we'll check it out. And then we have our case right here, and it's just kind of uh, covered up with some styrofoam wrap, and that's pretty much it. I guess you really don't have to protect the case too much, but looking at the case itself, just holding it initially right now, it's pretty, it's actually pretty solid. On the front, it of course has these two little divots here. And the idea of that is so that when you close it, it will also cover up the joysticks and not be held up. The thing with the Switch Lite, of course, or even the regular Switch, when it is flat on its front, it's never actually touching the ground, of course, or the table. And that's because of those joysticks. So naturally, they have to figure out a way around that. And they decided to include two divots there, which I guess should work. In fact, looking inside, it's it's pretty, pretty concave. So there shouldn't be an issue there. On the inside, they do have the Nintendo Switch logo printed right there, as well as Nintendo. And then an actual model number, which is HDH006, made in China. They do have vents on the back here, of course, to match up with the vents on the back of the Switch Lite, because this entire thing is designed to pretty much always stay on your Switch Lite. You don't have to remove it to play or any of that. So let's drop this guy in here and see how this, uh, how this goes. There we go. Let me flip that guy on there and we'll take a quick look at it. This is, of course, the blue Switch Lite that's been through a lot. So I thought it deserved a case. I <laughs> will say that. And if you close it up here, it does have a magnetic strip it seems down here or, or on either corner, it does grab when you close it. So it doesn't just kind of, it doesn't have like a lazy close to it, it grabs it. And you, it does make a nice little, nice little kind of click when it does close, you hear that? So it does grip, like it actually grabs it. It's not, it's not like a really cheap feeling close, which that, that is good. That's what I would expect from a $40 uh, cover. Um, and when you open it up, you can see it kind of goes behind it there. Ooh, it has some, ah, oh, that's interesting. So it has texture on the front and the back. And I think the idea with that is when you do close it like this, 
it's designed so that it won't really move. Like it's not actually gonna move right now. So I guess I could even, no, see that doesn't work. It's more for holding it, I guess. So if I hold it like this, which I'm not, I'm not too keen on right now because this is actually rubbing right here is rubbing against like the inside of my finger or my palm. I don't think I like that as much. Although I guess I could just kind of do this and it would just kind of, kind of flap around, I guess there. I, hmm, I don't like that as much. I guess you could do it, th you'd have to take some getting used to. I think you could do it, you just have to reposition your hand a little bit so it's not like getting kind of chewed up by this guy. Uh, and of course this will probably wear over time, um, but it does at least fit very, very well to the casing and you can reach all of the buttons. So that's not bad. And the speakers are uncovered. That was something else I thought about. The speakers are uncovered when you have this open. When you close it, it does cover up the speakers. Although the idea here is that when, you, when you're not using it, obviously it's covered and you wouldn't need them anyway. But like this, they at least thought about that and the speakers are uncovered. You do have the charge port also uncovered even when it's closed so that you can of course charge it if you have a battery bank in like a backpack with you. This should protect it pretty well. And then you could leave it plugged in here and of course sitting in your backpack just like that. This feels pretty solid. Although there is something I'm kind of realizing right now. Uh, this, there's a large missed opportunity here from Nintendo and it's something that we see with the iPad that I checked out when they had the flip cover, the, with the folio cover. The idea there was that it could also kind of help it stand up and the Switch Lite doesn't have, of course, a kickstand. This seems like a great opportunity for them to have added a kickstand. However, it does not appear to do that. In fact, if I kind of leave it here like, a, like almost like a little tent, it just opens up. That's mostly because this part here is just like fabric. It's not rigid at all. So it doesn't have like a click or anything. That is kind of a shame though. It's, that would have been a great thing if you had like multiple uh, like openings, you know, like where it kind of clicks open. That could have been a neat thing to sell it on for the Switch Lite. That is an odd oversight on their part to not have that as just an extra bit of functionality, just something else to add to it. Both R, L, Z, L, and Z, R are completely exposed, by the way, when it's in here and covered up. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, it could technically take some damage if dropped. So if it's like dropped on like its corner, it, it could take some damage. However, this of course is a Switch Lite that uh, has been through the ringer already where we've done things like changed out the, uh, <laughs> we've changed out the joystick, we've taken it completely apart. So this one has uh, been beaten up pretty good. So I figure while we're at it, we'll see how durable this case is uh, with a few light tests, nothing too crazy. We could of course do a, uh, just a quick drop from the front here, which is uh, a, a, fo a foot or two, I would say. And it does appear to be fine there, so that's good. I'd hit pretty hard though on the front where the joysticks are because that of course should be the first thing that hits since it's uh, kind of pushed out there. I'm a bit more concerned about it landing on its back since we have the uh, ZL, ZR there. But of course people will be curious as to how it holds up on that. And uh, the switch itself is already pretty durable, so having a case on it like this that is pretty, pretty tough. It's just gonna help. Let's go from... Let's go from all the way up here and see how that does. That one is, that one hit pretty hard on the wooden table, but it's still fine. Everything's still good on that. Um, I actually quit out there, but it's still, everything here is still good. So I guess the question now is what's the heaviest, most useless thing I have laying around right now that I can drop on top of it? Looks like it is also Xbox One proof. And since there will be some questions about if the uh, screen protector is any good, I figure we'll go ahead and pop that guy on right now just to see if it's, I mean, I assume it's just like kind of a cheap screen protector they threw in with it just to have it. Uh, but I figure we can uh, we can take a look here to see if it's uh, if it's any good. Screen protector seems pretty straightforward. It's like a piece of plastic, it's, it's, it's a screen protector, I don't know. There, there's not a lot that really gets done with screen protectors anymore. They seem pretty straightforward nowadays. So I wasn't expecting anything crazy, right? I, it just felt like something that they threw in there just to kind of tack on and say, hey, look, you also get a screen protector with your case. And uh, after dropping it on here, yeah, it's pretty much a screen protector. It's one of those standard ones that's like, I don't know, dime a dozen ones you might have that come with any accessory where it's like, oh, comes with a screen protector. It's, it's nothing fancy. But you know what? I have to at least give this slip cover some credit. It's durable. It's pretty tough. 
I think it'll protect Switch Lights from basic day-to-day -day use, especially if you keep your Switch Light in a backpack and it kind of moves around in there. This might not be a bad investment. Keep in mind, one thing that uh, does bug me is that we don't have uh, any type of standing ability with it, whether it's like what we would call a tent mode, I guess. I that's what they call it for like the two-in-ones, tent mode. Uh, <laughs> And it, unfortunately to me anyway, feels a little a little strange. It'll take some getting used to leaving this on when you're playing with it, specifically because of this area here. But I can see that kind of wearing in as you use it. Although maybe you're fine just using it kind of like this right here. Um, and otherwise though, you can get to everything. It closes well. It has a nice, a nice quality click to it when it closes. And it's not a bad accessory. You have to decide if it's $40 good I get that, it's just a slip cover, so some people may not see the value in that. However, I guess if you want to protect your Switch Lite, it's not a bad idea, especially if you're used to paying $100 for one of those folio ones on the iPad, although I guess that does at least stand the iPad up. But let me know what you guys think about the slip cover. It's been in the news a lot. People have been wondering, when is it coming over? It is now available on Amazon at Walmart, and I have a feeling GameStop will probably start stocking them as well. Basically, everywhere around you should start getting these in, probably this week coming up. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.